Welcome to the Joy of Development. This is episode two of our VR snowboarding project. In this episode, we're going to be getting started on our character's code. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the previous episodes to get caught up. Before we get started on our blueprints, we need to set up an enumerator. Right-click in your content browser, go to Blueprints, and select Enumeration. We're going to add two labels to this enumerator, labeling one back and the other front. Name and save your enumeration and open up your character's event graph. Today we're just going to be working with event play, event tick, and three custom functions. You'll also see I've made four variables, and in the functions there will be additional local variables. The first thing we'll do is set up event begin play to initialize our character. I used a sequence node to do this because I think it looks cleaner, but it's not required. After that, we'll plug event tick into our floor normals function. All right, now let's set these up. We're going to open the first function and use this to initialize our VR components. I've already set up a structure for us to follow, as well as laying out the nodes we'll need on the left. I've organized these by variables, nodes, and execution nodes. Now the first thing we're going to do is determine our head mounted display. So we'll need the nodes get HMD device name and switch on name. We'll move those into the comment box and set them up like so. Now we need to set up for Oculus and Steam VR. All we need for this is a set tracking origin node. Connect it to both Oculus HMD and Steam VR. And we'll leave it at floor level. Finally, we'll set up PlayStation VR. And for that, we need another set tracking origin. We'll set this one to eye level. And we'll also need to add a local offset. Connect those up and now we're going to need our VR root component and our default player height variable. Set the VR root to the offset's target and default player height to the delta location Z. Now we want to connect that to our switch on name. But instead of using default, we're going to add a new pin. Now we're going to go to pin options and change the name to all capitals PSVR. This is the default for VR initialization if you start a new project using the VR template, so you can add or remove options as needed. Connect the second set tracking origin to your PSVR pin, and then this is all set. We'll compile, save, and move on to the next function. In this function, we're going to be initializing two variables. So I'm going to use a sequence to keep things organized and easy to see. The first variable will be an array of vectors spaced locally to the snowboard that we'll use to detect if the board is making contact with the floor. For this, we'll need our snowboard component, a get local bounds node, a make array node, and our set floor checkpoints node. Set the snowboard as the target of get local bounds, and split the pins of both vectors. All I'm looking for is the tip of the nose and the tip of the tail, so we're just going to need our min x and our max x. Connect the make array node to the set floor checkpoints node. We'll need three pins for our array, one at the nose, one at the center, and one at the tail. Split the first and last pins. The middle can be left alone as x0 is already at the center. And we're going to connect our min x to the first x, and our max x to the last x. This next variable determines based on your footing which hand is near the nose and which hand is near the tail. We'll need our set hand positions node and a make map node. This map variable uses the back front enumerator we made earlier as its key and a motion controller as the value. We're also going to need both our motion controllers and our footing boolean. And finally we'll need two select nodes. Connect the select nodes to the two values on your map, and make sure you have a key for both the front and the back. Now we set these up so that if you are a goofy foot, your right foot is in front, and your left foot's in back, and vice versa for regular foot. And with that all connected up, this function's done. We'll compile, save, 
and move on to our last function for the video. For this function, we'll be using our floor checkpoints to check if the snowboard's grounded, and we'll be recording the normals of any successful detection. Our first step's pretty easy. We're just going to connect our floor checkpoints variable to a for each loop. Now we want to transform the checkpoint from the snowboard's local space to world space. We'll need our snowboard component, a get world transform node, and a transform location node. Connecting these up like so, we now have our start point. Now we're going to go down a local variable's number of units from the start position to get our endpoint. I've named the local variable floor check offset units, and while mine's set to 60 for demonstration purposes, I recommend you go around 15 to 30. We're also going to need our snowboard component, a get up vector node. We'll use a vector times float node to get our down vector by multiplying it by negative 1. Now we'll multiply that by our floor check offset and then we'll add it to our start position and this will give us our end. Now we're going to use these two points to do a line trace by channel. Connect your start and end points. Make sure the trace channel is set to visibility and turn on ignore self. If you want to visibly see your line traces, you can change the draw debug type. Now on a successful hit, we're going to record the normals. We've got a local vector array that we've called normal hits, and we've connected that to an add to array node. We'll add the out hit normal to the array, but only if it detects a successful hit. The very last thing we're going to do is return our normals, so we need a return node and we're going to return everything in normal hits. And that's it for that function. We'll compile, save, and we're done for this video. If we preview the game, you'll see that our camera is now standing appropriately above the snowboard. We can still look around. Everything's tracking just fine. If I peek over the edge here, you can see our red line traces coming out of the bottom of the snowboard. And everything's working as expected. And that's it for this episode. Keep an eye out for episode 3 where we'll be continuing our character's code. And if you love the joy of development, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. And don't forget to smash that like button.